those moments will be lost in time. Like tears. This is all being cut, obviously. <laughs> now, somebody say something to naturally lead into me talking about or doing the intro. Incha, I have a question for you. Great. Mm-hmm. Is cereal soup? What? <laughs> no, it's wait, a podcast. What? This is Food Runner. <laughs> no, wait, no. <laughs> what? Is cereal soup? Was that, is that like an actual question? Yeah. Like, the milk is the broth, and you got the pieces in it, or, like... The pieces in it. Oh, Tim, what are you... You should be a is, chef, what? Tim. <laughs> What's happening? You eat it with what? a spoon. It's all... It's, you know, mostly broth. There are pieces in it. You eat it with a spoon. <laughs> Dig in. I can see the... I just... I can see the logic. I just want to see how that... How... Why... Why was that in your head? I don't know. Welcome to Film Runners. This is... <laughs> <clears throat> the podcast where at least one of us <laughs> hasn't seen a movie that another God. one chose. We watch it. We talk about it. I am Michael. This is Tim. Hello. And Incha. Hi. Hi. And we are brought to you by. Get a hi. No. <laughs> this episode of Film is sponsored by Enamory.com. <laughs> Fine art paintings. Great. Uh, Not even graphs. listening. Not even listening to me. <laughs> I led you into. Uh, I was like, we're brought oh. to you by. And you were like, just didn't listen. And you want a hello. And you want a hello. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> Prince. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. Did not even uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think they do holiday cards. Um, if you want. Do they? Validate. Should you be sure? Should we be sure? <laughs> also, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter by this point. Right? Well, no, Val- Valentine's Day cards. Oh, great. Oh, do right. they do those? Well, we have weeks to convince them to. <laughs> if they don't, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. they absolutely do Valentine's Day cards. <laughs> if, you don't, if they don't do Valentine's cards and you want to buy some, you you send them a strongly worded email to anamory.com. Slash runners. com. Not slash. Do they really have anamory.com slash film runners? No, they don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> E-N-A-M-O-R-Y dot com and Amory. Um, Use code runners at checkout for 10% off your first order. So, everybody, uh, Tim, Incha, we're all here. Present? Raise your hands. It's a, it's an audio medium, so. Great. <laughs> um, it's glad to be back. It's, uh, you know what? I had a great Christmas. I was, um, yeah. New Year's. I was going to ask, did you guys enjoy your Christmas breaks? We've been off for a few weeks. And yeah, how I, uh, I've had yeah. so much pie and so much turkey. <laughs> too much pie, even probably. Some would say I would. I don't like when you have too much pie. Um, and we're getting back into it. <laughs> yeah, we are. It's 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 been a bit. But everyone's <laughs> enjoying their 2021 so far. It's all been good. So far, it's already been better than 2020. Yeah. We can all yeah agree about that. And we're gonna start off 2021. Start off with a good note with a classic Tim. <laughs> a classic Timothy Harvey pick. Tim. That's right. What movie did you force us to watch this week? <laughs> so uh, I decided to start off 2021 with a documentary, which <gasps> we have not done in my time on Film Runners. 
I don't know if you guys have done a documentary uh, before. I honestly um, can't remember. There is a lost episode that was a documentary, but it was so tasteless <laughs> that we couldn't. <laughs> we chose to delete it and never think about it again. But I think about it all the time. Yeah, I do too. Because I stand by my opinions. I just don't want anyone to hear that. <laughs> anyway, that's neither here nor there. I don't. I don't think we have done a doc. Have we done a documentary? I want to say we have. I do, but I don't I feel like there's remember. a thing. Yeah, like there's one I'm forgetting, but I, I kind of think no. I don't know. Anyway, oh, well. okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, the movie I decided to pick was uh, King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters. Uh, it's a documentary about um, Steve Wiebe, who is attempting to get the high score in uh, the Donkey Kong arcade game. Uh, it also involves uh, a the current high score um, player named Billy Mitchell, and um, kind of the story of um, Steve Wiebe's break out into the scene of competitive Donkey Kong play. And then there's some intrigue with um, Twin Galaxies, and there's a, another bunch of cast of characters that um, we can talk about later. It's uh, directed by Seth Gordon, and uh, like I said, there doesn't it's a documentary, so those are the two key players, are Steve and Billy. And Michael, you have seen this before. Yes. Um, <coughs> and Incha has not. No. She has so, seen um, it now. Yes. Correct. Uh, so, Michael, let's hear your opinions of King of Kong. Yes, I will give them to you. However, there was a thing I forgot to mention. In 2021, there was a new feature, um, and I will maybe cut this earlier. But there's a new feature I wanted to bring in as a surprise to you, Tim. I wanted to oh. give a Tim fact that Incha didn't know. And then we can talk oh. about it for a minute or two. And <laughs> the first Tim fact is that in high school, Tim didn't like when his neighbors were too noisy. Like cutting the grass or stuff. And he, and he didn't like it so much that we had a running gag about it. As if he would write it down in his diary and say, uh, my neighbors were too noisy. <laughs> so, Incha, if you want to ask him why he was so noise sensitive as a teenager, that's fine. I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, why? Uh, I don't like this segment. <laughs> I already hate it. <laughs> it's great. I have, I honestly, I have eight other facts written down, so we're good for a while. <laughs> um, I assume these are all going to talk about my high school. Career. So we'll see. No, some of them are oh. post high school. Oh no, I don't like this <laughs> at all. Some of them involve the stairs in your basement. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. Um, I, do, I I honestly don't remember where this came up. I remember we were in our were we in the pool where this came up? No, like, I don't think we were in your pool because you had a pool, hanging, right? I had a pool. I don't think it was up. in your pool, but you mentioned it about being like out in your pool. Because I really don't remember ever us experiencing it. <laughs> it was just you mentioning. Like, it wasn't like us being in the pool and you were like, man, that, that lawnmower is noisy. You were just like, man, I hate noisy lawnmowers when I'm in the pool <laughs> or something. Yeah, honestly, I, I do not rem Like, I think it's one of those jokes that I like. I was kind of came off as an offhand comment and just snowballed into something bigger than it really is i don't i don't remember being like i remember making that joke often, um, <laughs> often. <laughs> too, too much obviously <laughs> yeah but um i don't remember ever having like a an anger towards my neighbors because they were being loud <laughs> maybe at one point i was just once and maybe then it, like i said it yeah, snowballed it's weird that it must have it must have pissed you off so much once that you mentioned it a few times. Uh, and maybe it just fit your general vibe of being an old man <laughs> as a teenager. Uh-huh. <laughs> it yeah. may have just been that. Inja, do you have any more questions? I no. Okay. Um, so what I thought about this movie. <laughs> <Get him going. laughs> Is that, and you know, next week we'll more 
we'll put this segment in at the appropriate place for sure. Uh, sure. It'll go after the enamory <laughs> ad. Tim will be ready for it, but he won't know what I'm going to say. But it's going to be there. It's going to be a segment. <laughs> it is going to be a segment. Tim, at least for another seven weeks. <laughs> as far as I can count. When I signed up for Film Runners, I did not sign up for this. You can quit any time. <laughs> I have said this day one. <laughs> From day one, you can quit. I. Uh, King of Kong. Uh, I love it. I think it's a fantastic documentary. I think it's... it. I think the story itself is very good. But even ignoring it, like going on the macro scale of a documentary, and I know it's like... I'm sure it's edited and not manipulated, but it, like we're supposed to feel certain ways about certain people, obviously. But... Just the fact that they fucking were able to capture this story impresses me. It makes me impressed about documentarians in general. Like, that they were like, oh, this fucking game. What even? Like, game conference? What, I don't even know what you call it. But they were like, oh, this thing will cover some people. And then they found this story. It's so interesting to me on the macro scale and then on the the actual movie itself it's just very interesting and cool and i love it incha what were your initial impressions first off i just wanted of preferences by saying that he really i did like this documentary mm-hmm. a lot <laughs> mm-hmm. it's a great way to say but you didn't like it, it uh-huh. i was how would you prefer pissed off. <laughs> i was pissed off the entire time Whoa, yeah. i was so i have six i have six pages of notes that's just me yelling yes. because i <laughs> because i could not express but it just myself. Says, ah, like ah. It's, no, like, <laughs> I, it's like me calling everybody a bitch because i was just like yes. I can't, I couldn't handle it. Like, cause I, so, okay. Yeah. Let's go back to the beginning. We'll, we'll get into it. No, these are initial impressions. So yeah, these are initial impressions. So but you I, overall I really, liked it, I liked but it. your feelings. I was just mad the entire time. It did. And I was mad when I, it's the, the storytelling, the storytelling is great. Yeah. I agree with Michael in the fact that they captured all of this and didn't find a single fucking thing wrong with it afterwards is astonishing anyway but it's well i don't know if that's we'll get into it but we'll get into it we'll get into it so do you think it's good or not no i think it's good i think it's great i think it's a great documentary and it it tells like like two sides of the whole story from and it has like it's the hero and the villain yeah of the story it's pretty it's works for sure it's very much like a you couldn't find a more perfect, uh, like every it's Rocky. Like they accidentally found the Rocky story, or yeah, you could argue like kind of shaped it to be the Rocky story. Mm-hmm. But they couldn't have found a more perfect villain, <laughs> which we'll get into. <laughs> but Tim and you chose the movie. How did you feel about it? Yeah, um, this was one of those movies we talked about it before with another movie that um, uh, oh it was. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang when we were watching uh, The Nice Guys. It was it was one of those movies that came out uh, around the time when I was working at um, a convenience store that rented movies, and it just kind of came on the shelf. And I was into video games at the time, so um, I watched it. And it's kind of like one of those hidden gems where I don't know a lot of other people that have seen this movie, um, but it's one of those ones that I hold in the back of my head as one of my favorite documentaries. And I agree. I think Steve Weeby is like the perfect like good guy underdog yeah he's mm-hmm. like yeah underdog, the perfect yeah. underdog you couldn't and create a better one <laughs> but, uh, no <laughs> and uh billy mitchell um watching it i haven't watched it in a few years but watching it again um on this watch billy mitchell at the beginning kind of seems like a nice enough guy like he's doing things like he's giving that lady a cubert uh, arcade no that's not I, at the beginning so i disagree with you uh, sure but, but i know I, what you I, mean I, but i i yeah but then later as the film goes on he becomes more and more of a of a of a villain which, i think uh, yeah i don't know should we talk about it now because i was gonna say i think that part at at that point in the film is very clearly an underhanded thing where he's like trying to come off as magnanimous and being like 
oh, I'm giving you this to practice on and I'm, and I'm going to send you to this competition or whatever. But also uh, take this tape and he's like orchestrating it to be like he's only doing that to seem cool. Right. You know to what I mean? To kind of seem the ambassador yep. of the game that he's trying to be, but it underhandedly. Yeah, he's just doing it on. to like amp up his own shit. Also, I just, I- ignoring that moment, I just, from frame one, as soon as you see Billy Mitchell, I just think he's a piece of shit. He just <laughs> looks like a douchebag <laughs> immediately. I wrote down gaming Jesus, and I don't remember why, but, um, yeah, that was like my first note is gaming Jesus, Billy Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Mitchell. I have, like, my first thing about Billy was, like, Billy has some strong Tom Cruise energy. He kind of does. I totally see Because it's, see like, that. that strong, like, Scientology, I am the best, I will win at all costs, you can't stop me. Like, it's, it, uh, he's disgusting. And the fact that he has so many hanger-ons, hangers-on, hangers-on, hanger-ons. How do you plural? Like, he's got hanger-on? a... a- like he's like, a cult of personality where yes, he's got he's, he has people. like a cadre he has got like acolytes who are like uh what's his name something coup brian coup brian whatever. coup oh my the God. best character him? Well, i will cut him? the clip in. yes tim tim hold on <laughs> we will get to him i will cut that in but even better the more interesting story is this other guy who seems to be a closer friend the other steve who's like a fucking lawyer or something who seems to legitimately just appreciate uh steven weeby's uh, uh, acumen like the fact that he shows up and actually plays and my favorite shot and it actually made me kind of cringe was at the very end when that steve guy was like actually steve weeby seems like a cool guy who's doing lots of cool stuff and like he's good at the game or whatever <laughs> and then billy mitchell is just staring fucking daggers into yeah, the side right of his now. head it's my favorite <laughs> shot it's so good and it is comment there is just like i don't know enough about him or yeah, he's like, subject. I don't know. I've never, I've never met him. I don't know. <laughs> it's so good. Because he had so many chances. Like, he just it's go great. see him. You fuck. It's so, it's such a well-structured. And going back to, uh, someone mentioned, but his, his wife. I love the fact that his wife is, there's almost like a small story arc with his wife in that she knows it's very stupid. <laughs> the entire film, like, <laughs> all of this is dumb. Also, she kind of, calls her husband a loser in a roundabout way a lot of times. He never has quite reached that pinnacle. He never quite in any of his endeavors was regaled as the number one guy, the guy that was better than the rest and was on top of the mountain. Oh, he's just come up short in a lot of things in his life and I just think, you know, nobody wants to do that all the time. Um, uh-huh. but he, she is very adamant that he is like a very cool guy or not cool, but a very nice and great guy, husband, father who has had a shitload of like shitty breaks. Like sometimes it doesn't go your way. And she thinks, you know, the, she's like, yeah, you got to look after your kids. I get that you're into Donkey Kong and whatnot. And then. The fact there are two amazing things near the end. The fact that her and the kids go to the competition, like the Guinness competition with him is great. Mm -hmm. And there's a thing where uh, Steve Weeby is talking about Billy Mitchell not showing up. And someone's like, oh, well, he wasn't prepped or whatever. And she's like, well, he had weeks to prep. And I was like, fuck yeah. (laughs) When she like defended him. When she defended him, like, in public with, like, other people, I was like, man, you rule. Like, I loved his wife. I loved Steve Weeby's wife. She reminded me a lot of my wife. Yeah. (laughs) Like, she knows I do stupid stuff all the time, and she forgives me for doing stupid stuff all the time. Like, um... Like, like, um, uh, you know, a weekly podcast where I watch a movie and (laughs) talk to my friends about it. The word isn't not allow, but, like, um allows for <laughs> like not allow as in giving permission but allows us in like this is going to happen so you can do this now <laughs> but also you have a child at home and me that's right 
Yeah, I loved his wife. Incha, what did you think about his wife? I loved his wife. His wife was so cool. Yeah. His wife is better than the other wife because he barely <laughs> saw the other I wife. Thought, and barely, I kind of, like... Yeah, I kind of felt bad for the other wife. Because the other wife, like, literally, I felt like, I like, here's the thing. This is probably not this dude's life, but I feel bad for the other wife because I feel like she was hired to be there. <laughs> Like, they had no loving interaction. The hand holding was not oh, up like, to par. Him just walking <laughs> her like around when she was the like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like like tailing her along, like walking her through the arcade game, the Guinness at the end. Yeah, yeah, it felt it just felt weird. And she like barely knew anything about what he was doing. Meanwhile, like Steve's wife is just like, yeah, he brought a machine, plays Donkey Kong. I don't whatever he wants to do it's fine as long as he can take care of the kids later yeah on. i love when she's like yeah. i don't want her to be on the couch every night but like when we gotta look after the kids like we gotta look after the fucking kids and it's yeah. honestly the the moment that there are two moments that stand out tim knows the one that stands out the most but the second one mm-hmm. is when the videotaped part with steve weeby i was having a game in my life i was i think i got six hundred thousand, and i hadn't died yet and I start hearing some noises coming down the stairs, screaming. I don't believe this is happening. Wipe your bottom? Yeah. I will in a second, bud. What? Okay, bring me some toilet paper, buddy. Derek, I got I'm gonna get the world record, Derek. Derek, I'm gonna get the world don't record. Play, don't play. Derek. No. Derek! You stop it! Beating the Donkey Kong record with his kid yelling in the background like, <laughs> Dad, you gotta wipe my ass! <laughs> so whatever. But it's so funny and like, you couldn't pick a better way to show him being the underdog. And comp- contrasting that is Billy Mitchell is a character from The Office but come to he's like michael scott if he actually like <laughs> fucking sucked like the scene the scene where he is talking about what the his three letter um things <laughs> acronym the acro- um, yeah yeah avatar uh, handle 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 oh yeah when God. when you beat a high record and put in the blue i often have people ask me what my handle is what my three initials are i mean come on I tell people, look at me. What do you think my three initials were? If you don't know, you're not looking hard enough. T-I-E? No. Which one was I wearing yesterday? The American. USA? USA. So I had Latin friends and I had Canadian friends and I always had to keep the Americans on top. Um, and he's trying to get, like, because he thinks it's going to be a cool moment, like, trying to get the guy to figure it out is so fucking funny when he's like, look, and he, like, points at his tie, and the guy's like, tie? He's like, no, what was I wearing yesterday? He's like, oh, flag, USA? He's like, yeah, USA, because USA is number one. So good. So, Incha, I want to hear why you were so angry all the time about this. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, I feel Let's start like... from the beginning. What made you angry first? <laughs> well, first it was just because I like Steve and I wanted the best. So like, see, hearing Steve's story from the beginning and knowing that, like, he never really had much fortune, but he can do all of these things. It kind of bugged me that, like, this one thing he got like it got taken away from him at every single chance and then it bugged me when that fucking rat faced fuck (laughs) brian co was just like hey billy he's beating your record fuck off like why are you here and then like the other one the other one was fine. I like that other scene. There's that so much cool. there's so much but... intrigue in espionage when he's actually playing live and Billy like, won't show up. Dis- it's disgusting. And then when this woman shows up with the tape and she's just like, Oh, this is from Billy and he wanted you to play only with your friends around. It's kind of just like I like why? Why? Oh my god, just... the cabin when they're watching with Domino's Pizza. I, have... <laughs> I had to so honestly <laughs> I had to pause it and stand up and walk around the room. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen this movie like four times. 
<laughs> here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, well, there so it is. He, Wait, so he's so talk, so Billy's not even there. They're talking on the phone with him. It's he, so funny that he needs a fucking so play. Annoying. So speaking of Tim, the best part of the movie, speak on it. Yeah. Um, so this is a part of the film that me and my ha- Michael have talked about, I don't know, for 13 years since this movie has come out. I, yeah, 13 years. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah. Um, because um, Brian Coe goes around and Coo, okay. tells everybody oh. at Twin Galaxies that uh, a Donkey Kong kill screen is coming up. And he, he like taps people on the shoulder while they're playing Donkey Kong kill, kill screens coming. You're gonna you're gonna cut it in, I know. <laughs> yes, I know absolutely. If anybody wants to see there's a Donkey Kong kill screen coming up. Uh, there's a Donkey Kong kill screen coming up if anybody wants to watch. You gotta be able to perform in the show with someone who's a contender, staring straight at you, staring at the game, possibly even playing mind games with you. I mean, it's all, it's part of being a champion. You have to overcome it. There's a potential Donkey Kong kill screen if you want to watch. This is, uh, you know, he, he's gonna have to play it perfectly. He's at the hardest part of Donkey Kong, and, uh, you know, it's not gonna get any easier. Uh, so we, we may have an exciting moment here, uh, or, uh, you know, the, the pressure may get to him. One of those random elements might happen. Uh, sounds like he just cleared another board, but we could have a wild barrel or some aggressive fireballs. I thought I was going to be the first fun spot kill screen, uh, and then I had I had three fireballs trap me. I had the hammer in my hand. They still got me. Uh, so anything can happen in Donkey Kong. So uh, for someone else to beat me to the kill screen would be a letdown. But let's see what happens. Maybe he'll maybe he'll crack under the pressure, and maybe I'll get my chance to do it first. There's a Donkey Kong kill screen might be coming up if anybody wants to see it. Hey, Todd, if you're interested, uh, there might be a Donkey Kong kill screen in a couple minutes. Yeah. (laughs) Pretend it just happened and then talk. (laughs) (laughs) So he and everybody seems so disinterested. It's so (laughs) so, like Brian. Brian Co thinks he's the shit and he's going around. He lives in his own little world where he's, I don't know, I don't know. like he just thinks that he's the best, but he's clearly not even, he's not even in the top three. But it's so funny that you would think this is the exact audience who, if he was like, oh, a Donkey Kong kill screen is coming up, they would be like, oh, fuck, yeah. But they show at least, I don't know, eight, nine, ten times of him like talking to people about it and they don't seem to care no. at yeah. all it'd, be, it'd be if we went over to Incha and be like hey Incha a Donkey Kong kill screen is coming up what would you say Incha get the fuck away from me <laughs> yeah seriously let me play my ding dong or whatever <laughs> ding dong wait, wait oh you said ding dong I thought you said ding dong <laughs> let me play my ding dong <laughs> um back to to Brian uh Coo, one of my favorite yeah Brian Koo one of the, my favorite parts of it is when um Steve does accomplish getting the kill screen at Twin Galaxies and he says well I thought I'd be the first one to uh, get it but uh, yeah good for him and it pans on like him and he cry. has such dead eyes <laughs> looks, yeah yeah and like, I, I'm sure that's seconds. editing like I'm sure it was them like waiting to take the mic off him or something but it's amazing filmmaking to have that. Also, I fucking <laughs> love the, like, spy camera of them, like, through a gumball machine or something. Like, spying on him talking to Billy Mitchell on the phone during that event. Oh, yeah. Like, when he's in the distance or whatever. And he's like, oh, yeah, well, it looks like he's coming up on 700,000 points or whatever the fuck. And it's, it's so, like, it doesn't... It's... I don't want to be dismissive because it fucking does matter like i do feel i mean to be clear it doesn't matter (laughs) but (laughs) i do the movie's so good at making me actually give a fuck about whether steve levy will get his score counted it doesn't matter at all but it's the hypocrisy of them accepting a tape from billy mitchell and not accepting the tape from steve levy is so transparent and garbage that i fucking it like riles me up like i hate it (laughs) it sucks you alluded to it earlier but i think there's really good two good story arcs in this movie one of them is that steve the second steve uh and walter day um, are you gonna and walter Walter day Day? yeah 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 yeah. where they you know all that bullshit that happened at the beginning and then by the end of the movie when he's uh steve is trying to get in the guinness book of world records 
and trying to accomplish it, and everybody's watching him play, and they realize, yeah, he's a really good player. He's fucking and he's good. Like, he's and good. Yeah. In front of him, play, play. And then they do that speech at the end where they, like, Walter says, yeah, you know what? Submit it to tape anytime. We're not going to say shit about it. We're going to trust your word. You're a straight shooter, blah, 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 blah. So that's, a, like, a really good arc of that. I and do... I think the sec... I... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, Jeff. So garbage. I'm sorry. It's just garbage. garbage. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I just hate... I hate Walter so much, too, because how dare you... I just I I get that I understand that and agree with it. However, he does have an arc over the film. He does. Yeah, he does. But he's a garbage. (laughs) (laughs) I think they're just here's the thing with like when you have a society that is so small and tight knit, like uh, cabinet arcade games or whatever. When it comes to like competitiveness, the people who keep track of that are going to be friends with the people who accomplish that right like it, um, it just yeah we'll get into that a little oh. bit later. <laughs> okay. oh <laughs> i don't i honestly don't know what you're talking about <laughs> but it's so so i understand they're like uh, i don't understand it because obviously i hate billy mitchell but i understand their loyalty to him in the sense that they're like oh billy's my friend and he's like a cool guy yes. he isn't <laughs> but they're like yeah i get it But I think I love Walter's, like, uh, arc over the movie of figuring out, like, oh, actually, like, Steve Weeby's pretty fucking cool and somebody else can be good at Don Young, too, which seems like (laughs) such a dog shit arc for a movie to be interesting. Uh, But it is very interesting and I like it. But speak more on why Walter is garbage garbage anyway but uh it's just i feel like it's just the way because i agree with your statement that like even with these tiny groups especially with this one it seemed like they were so close-knit that if billy like if steve came in and broke the record from like took the record from billy then that would have just ended up being a problem because then they would have had to accept somebody new which i hate about this group of people because even at the end, when Walter sent him the letter and was just like, we're sorry about the inconsiderate treatment that you had. I'm like, this is now? Yeah. Now? Yeah. Like, you didn't believe him during this entire thing. You had goons go over his house. Everything. Like, everything. <laughs> well, <okay. laughs> Yes, I agree with you 100%. And I also think it is as drastic as you say. But to be clear, they weren't. Good. <laughs> they just checked his. They're not good. Like it was yeah. Goons yeah. of Billy and some other <laughs> Goons of Billy. They break his wife's knees. <laughs> they just checked his gaming board or whatever the fuck cabinet is what it's called. So yeah, I agree. It was as harsh as you're saying. But to clarify uh, terminology, <laughs> they were they were fucking busting his wife's kneecap. But yeah. um, but you're right. It is uh like a. It is an old boys club, like sort of niche community where everybody seems to know each other. And then if anybody comes, I mean, I, the party at the cabin with the Domino's pizzas shows that enough. It's yeah. but I mean, it's like it's low key like a, a class thing. Like Steve Weeby is a guy who has a family, works a job, like has been unemployed because he's a fucking teacher, and that happens. And Billy Mitchell is this fucking, like, sauce mogul or whatever. (laughs) Like, he clearly, like, I think it's, I haven't done any research or, uh, and they don't spell it in in the movie, but I think it's his parents' business and he just runs it. Is that right? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. But I don't think he, like, created it. Anyway, he, like, runs a sauce business and is rich as fuck. And people want to be his friends and steve weeby is nobody he's like straight up just a nobody like you or me or you like uh, both of you i said you <laughs> <You're both laughs> of the you as i said and he he it's just like no like billy mitchell he's the cool guy he he's the guy who's in charge the brian guy also retired at what 35 so he's 
Oh, the coup, yeah. <laughs> the coup man himself. Yeah, when he said, no, 30. He said 30. He was like, oh, at 30, I retired. And so I spent all my time at Fun Zone playing these arcade games or whatever. And I was like, what the fuck did you do, Brian? <laughs> like, what did you do? Yeah, they don't go into that at all. He's either him or the dude who we only get a couple, like, talking head interviews with him outside of the cabin when they're watching the tape. But it's this like bald guy, and his... uh, Greg Greg Bond. He is the Mappy champion. Oh I wrote my that God. down because I don't know what Mappy <laughs> is, and I thought that was a hilarious like accolade to put under beside his name. <laughs> All I know is his eyes were very wide, and he was very passionate uh, during the Talking Head, and I loved it. <laughs> he was like, "So it's it's gonna be like wild to see what's happening. I'm gonna cut in whatever he says, but it's like passionate shit." And I loved him because he he wouldn't take it sides or anything. He was just talking about it. It ruled. It's I like, have a question. Yeah. Did they interview a guy in prison? No. Oh, are you talking about Mr. Awesome? Who? <laughs> no, there was a guy in two shots that looked like he was in a prison. No. Oh, no. I don't remember that. I'm gonna I'm gonna look that back up. Look it up. Because I don't know what you're talking about. Although we probably should talk about Mr. Awesome, uh, something Schlitz or something Schlitz. Yeah, Rob Ron Schlitz. Rob Schlitz. Rob. Yeah. yeah. Who? I don't want to. I don't want to give any credence to the Billy Mitchell side, but seems like a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. <sighs> However. I don't know. It, it immediately goes out the window. Once, if they think that guy fucked with the board... I, I mean, we're getting in the weeds on this. <laughs> like, you just gotta watch the movie. But it, they didn't find anything wrong with the tape, except they thought the board in the cabinet was fucked with, or could have been, by this Mr. Awesome guy. It, so it sounds so stupid. Well, I just want to stop talking. No, so here's the thing, is that I don't even think... I don't think they had ev any... Ev they well, didn't have evidence. You know what? This could be, this could just be good saw... editing by the... by the Or or good editing by the documentarians. But yeah. from from the audience, they had no evidence All of they knew was he was theory. sent aboard by Mr. Awesome. But they didn't know that until they showed up at his house. No, exactly. Yeah, but they so, only showed up at his house because Billy Mitchell was a little bitch. Right. Mm -hmm. But then, if, which is fine. If they were like, if they were like, oh, well, we don't know. He's kind of shady. We're throwing that out. We're not accepting tapes. That's fine. But then once Steve Weeby shows up in person and like beats the fucking record in person and then Billy Mitchell is like, oh, play my tape and let me listen to it through your cell phone. And then they accept that tape. Like, fuck you. It's the hypocrisy. It. I hate it. Oh, yeah. I hate this because I, I couldn't care less about, <laughs> about this topic. But I hate the, the, the movie is so good at making me give a shit about the people and the, the hypocrisy of it. It just sucks. Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> um, I also, sorry, uh, the other one I mentioned earlier that there's two really good arcs in this. One of them was that one about the kind of the acceptance of Steve into this old boys club, I guess, you want, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. But then the other one is the story arc of uh, Steve Weeby's name. I thought was really... <laughs> <laughs> I love it too. I love that they kept it until the end because so many people said it right and wrong throughout. But like officially said it wrong a bunch. <laughs> it's such a good arc. Steve Weeb feels fine to me, doesn't he to you? Steve Weeb? Could you come up here? Hey, Walter, say that again. It's Steve Weeby. Is it Steve Weeby? Yeah, Weeby. I, That's okay. For some reason, I keep thinking it's, it's Weeb. Sorry. The thing about Steve is Steve is special. Steve has gone through a long history that don't need to burden you with, but I just wanted to tell you that I want to congratulate you and shake your hand okay. again, that as far as I'm concerned, you are a top player worthy of the highest regard from Twin Galaxies, and we're very honored to receive your videotapes at any time you want to record them as Sunderstruth, because we think, uh, we think your skill set is on the highest level, and you're a member of the family, and you're, you're great. Thank you and very so, much. So you're okay. You're great. You're, you you're, you're, well, you're a great you. performer. Right, right. And then at the very end, it was the other Steve that said, oh, no, you're saying it wrong. It's Weeby, because he... Mm -hmm. Asked him in the like I don't know I just I I love that because throughout the like I forgot that kind of happened but so 
halfway all, all through the movie and he's like i'm pretty sure it's weeby like this guy like why do they keep saying weeb all the time yeah it is kind of it's it's almost like a small arc of like like billy mitchell in this community which whatever is such a known quantity and steven weeb <laughs> quote unquote isn't and then it's like by the end it's like actually it's weeby <laughs> and then he like blows them all away <laughs> It's, yeah, yeah I, I love that too. That always stands out to me as well. Um, also, just uh, I really like how cool his friend is. The friend who like never takes part. I think his name is Mike Thompson. I was trying to look at the, the name. Yeah, I think but, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> but he's just some like anybody's friend. But he's he's got Stephen Weeby's back a hundred percent and he's like <laughs> one of my favorite things is the line i'll try to find it and cut it in here but when he's like i i know this i always hear billy mitchell talking about like oh i beat this and i do this but i've never seen him do it live <laughs> it's like <laughs> fuck yeah <laughs> like he's got his friends back like a hundred percent and it's so cool yeah, I, I like to imagine that he has no idea about Doc. No, yeah. Not a part of this world. And all, Steve said this to him once, and then yeah. he's on the camera saying it in front of him. That's why I love him, and that's why I love Steve's wife. Like, they couldn't care any less. <laughs> like, you couldn't pay them to care less about it. But they're still like, fuck yeah, Steve Weeby rules. <laughs> like, if he says this happened, it happened. Like, fuck you. And also, very good scenes of him teaching and talking to his students and then telling the students about him having the record was very cool oh yeah and then his one student was just like what? when are you gonna <laughs> kick that dude's ass yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh, again uh, feeding into like how could you make him any more of an underdog like yeah. the fucking kids are cheering him on like, <laughs> i think it does a good job too of I mean, this was 2007, so I don't know how much of this was in the forefront of people's minds at the time, but, like, the mental health aspect of people, mm -hmm. right? It is. There is yeah. an, uh, a pretty raw or brutal or, like, I just noticed it, which just means 10 years on, it's more of a thing. But when his mom is just like, I always thought there was a part of him that was autistic, it just hit me as if, like, <laughs> oh, wow, <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> that you would just say that randomly but yeah i agree with you like i uh, i think that's what you're talking about right like that well i think well that one was one thing but even just um you know he, he had lost his job so he was going through depression so he's got a little bit of ocd probably where he was playing like i don't want to i'm not his therapist or psychiatrist i'm you're not a movie all right <laughs> but stop recording so i don't know what he's got going on i was only but... gonna record this if you were his therapist we're shutting this um off. we're shutting it you down know, he, <laughs> um but i mean he latches after he lost his job at boeing he latches on to this uh game um to yeah. get him through it and even yeah. his wife says at one point like like this kind of kept him going and uh at one yeah. point after um uh billy mitchell brings out the million tape like the million point tape like there's a scene of Steve a million no audio point at all, just crying. Like it's so oh my god, the yeah. him just sitting there crying while he's being interviewed is the saddest fucking thing I've ever seen. Yeah, that fucked that fucked me up. It hurt me. It hurt me real bad. I felt so bad for him because he's just a normal guy. <laughs> like he just and and this is why like um I know you you fucking hate him, Ninja, but um what's Walter Day? So like he sucks at first because he's very enthralled with billy mitchell right but the fact that um the fact that steve weeby keeps showing up keep keeps putting up the scores like putting in the work like walter day very clearly is like oh fuck like this guy is good like regardless of what billy mitchell says because he's jealous that he beat his score he's like mm -hmm. a good dude who shows up and puts in the work and you know he turns on him and it's and it's very nice but like we're always on his side because we knew he had to wipe his kid's ass at the beginning <laughs> so we, knew, we know he's a normal guy but i do i think the walter day arc it, it, like this time watching it was very interesting the turn between billy being like a, a billy mitchell 
stan or whatever you want to call it and then being like oh shit i should be an objective arbiter of what the fuck is going on and then it is right. very legitimately heartwarming at the end when he's like we'll accept your tapes like we believe you're 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 worthy and you fucking rule because he he showed up and he he did that stuff and billy mitchell didn't because he's a coward I, I alluded to this earlier do you want to hear we i said we'll get into that do you want to hear the updates on the our king of con i know i've read the updates yes so, yeah, ask please each. yes <laughs> yeah. yes please okay. yes so walter day he was the owner of uh twin galaxies um mm -hmm. which was he it was guinness went to them to they were like you are the arbiter of the the records for cabinet games like old school games right uh was it just cabinet not or like all video games? games yeah they were like yeah they were like we trust you so guinness was like yeah you're yeah guy. probably shouldn't have but okay yeah well, well that's yeah. the thing is yeah. that, <laughs> so uh apparently um walter day um billy mitchell and uh another referee of twin galaxies were all in cahoots and they all like there was anti-corruption stuff happening um <laughs> Well, that's pretty actually bad. Billy Mitchell. Um, because of that, Billy Mitchell in 2018 had all of his scores stripped from Twin Galaxies. Good. Because Fuck they him. said they said it, there was enough evidence to say it looked like he was doing it on an emulator, right? C correct. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's wild, man. There should be a King of Kongs too. <laughs> that kind yeah. of make, that makes me even more mad because that I hate tape because he's so fucking so condescending fishy. and like so like oh you just gotta man I love so to interrupt sorry your part to, here to, <laughs> to interrupt that, <laughs> that fucking part at the end and I think I'll cut it in here but when he's like when he's like uh, the only way to know is when you play it live and then that's it's unimpeachable or whatever. And he never plays live in the entire fucking oh documentary. God. I love that. Just like hoist it on his own petard. Yeah. And then he was like, and then like another quote that he saw was just like, oh, I should start losing more because people oh like. Oh my God. You know, I hate him so much. I like, hate him so Oh my God. And like that tape, mad, like, like looked mad fishy. Oh, like even you Walter Day was like, oh, there's some questions yeah. about that score jump. But anyway, sorry. And then too, even continue. that other referee was just like, yeah. um, the tape jumped like three times. What's up with that? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I, I don't well, think I don't that even part think... happened. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I don't think, honestly, I don't think that that was what got him when they got, because I think he posted another score. So at the end of the movie, they said that Steve we Weeby we got the title yeah after getting a million 49 and i think after yeah. that billy mitchell topped him again and it was that <laughs> tape that they went through and looked and looked at that that tape and it was love getting topped by billy mitchell <laughs> <laughs> um that tape that they did they looked and there was um the way that the board loaded yes yeah was proved that it was emulation yeah, so they like stripped that. all of his all of his scores except for his very first score. Now, yes. however, oh. Guinness Book of World Records, even though that they go to Twin Galaxies, so Twin Galaxies got sold from Walter Day to another person in 2014. So Walter Day is no longer um, like Twin Twin Galaxies after a lot of this stuff happened, and I think what we see in the movie. Um, a lot of corruption and and uh, boys club <laughs> okay. kind of yeah it's a real fucking it's a den of thieves <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> so once that happened like twin galaxy started building up its reputation again after yeah um yeah disassociating itself with walter day twin galaxies decided to discredit billy mitchell's scores but in 2020 guinness book of world records reversed their decision and billy is records are still in the guinness book of world records even because twin galaxy didn't didn't uh <laughs> didn't they lose a lawsuit like twin uh, something like billy sued twin galaxies or something there's been a lot of <laughs> lawsuits. How? there's been a lot of um we should we should say here this is all opinion piece we do not want any defamation lawsuits uh, no, billy, loves sue me. Sue. billy mitchell sucks i don't give a shit billy mitchell sucks fuck him yeah. his wife is paid for so <laughs> <laughs> although i will say we don't have any evidence of that <laughs> no 
his wife is paid for one two she has one of the most damning things where she's like i've never seen him play a game in my life (laughs) she's like he's never played a game like what are you talking about so no, so uh, yeah, Billy Mitchell's scores are still in the Guinness Book of World Records, even Whoa. though Twin Galaxy has already said that they, he was cheating. He was cheating. He was. Well, he he. We shouldn't say he wasn't cheating. He was he was using emulation, which is has a different scoreboard than yeah. Um, the arcade. Score. At the very, I mean, <laughs> even if he was using a full on like normal cabinet, that was like totally fine. The fact that he wouldn't go head to head with Steve Weeby. He, he, like he's a fucking loser you know yeah like he just wouldn't cause it's like if you're watching rocky and, and at in the third act apollo creed was just like nah i don't want to fight i'm actually good i'm, I'm just gonna remain the champion <laughs> like it's just you, you like you lose you just lose by not doing it right regardless yeah. of whatever yeah so fuck um, that guy yeah the other thing i was gonna say is that uh, steve uh, Weeby's record has been beaten several times since yeah, the movie probably. has come out. Um, That's fine. I just liked, I yeah. like him. He, I mean, he's the kind of guy who he just wanted it to be recognized, right? Like, that was the thing. Like, the fact that they discounted it for no reason, I think, was the worst part to to him like he's yeah i mean his fucking wife is basically like this guy's a three-time loser i don't know why I'm married him. <laughs> but no he rules i uh, i'm like but he it doesn't matter whether he holds the record but the fact that he fucking got it like he beat it once is good enough but then being like no actually you didn't because of bullshit because we sent fucking mark q or whatever <laughs> to like strong arm your mom <laughs> like, no. it's just a matter of like i didn't like i agree like it's just a matter of all of them like playing fair too like yeah you can't say oh he didn't show up but his record's still intact like he didn't show up he should be disqualified yes like it should be like it feels like and that's another thing that kind of made me mad too it feels like there were there were rules Mm -hmm. but there were no set rules and the only rules that mattered was the rules that came from billy instead of the organization in the tournament that they needed to be a part of like it's it was just wild to see this man know that he is getting beaten at every single corner and he cannot win. Yeah. It's just I will oh, say it's, it's very funny. It's so sad. as much as it's so annoying, like Billy just fucking holding court and like talking to all these people. But it is very funny when he's talking to Steve, who he dropped off at the last tournament, and is like talking to him constantly. But Steve kind of like likes <laughs> Weeby, like Steve Weeby. <laughs> and then he like because he's like yeah, he's just, he's a normal guy who seems chill and is just playing a game. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know how you can. I can only speak for myself, but I I talked with Steve. I talked to his wife. I talked to his kids. I met with him, talked to him in detail. And speaking for myself, I have no question about his integrity, his uh, ability or anything else. I mean, he's proven himself not just as a Donkey Kong player, but really, uh, as a person of, some, of somebody who really desires to do the right thing. Do you agree with, I mean, it's, I'm not familiar enough with the situation. Okay. Like, I feel like in Billy Mitchell's head, he can't meet the guy. Cause if he meets the guy, he's like, oh, he's just a normal guy. But in his head, he can be like, oh, this is a fucking, this dude is the worst. He's like a piece of shit. <laughs> But if you meet him, he's like a normal guy, which brings us back to like him staring daggers at that Steve dude (laughs) for saying like, oh, yeah, he's fine. His wife's cool. (laughs) His kids are dumb. (laughs) And him being like, you piece of shit. And you brought up a funny point that I remembered. The there's rules uh, section in this movie where they, (laughs) uh, you know, they go over the quote unquote rules. And one of the rules that like Walter Day kind of actions out is profanity is not allowed yeah <laughs> just not allowed. like all these normal like oh you can't you do this you can't do this and profanity like when they did 
if somebody said fuck when they lose a man, would they immediately discredit their score? Yeah, I feel like that part was like a video they had filmed already for something else, as if like, and it was like, if somebody freaks out and is like, fuck this shit, and like, started rocking one of the cabinets, they'd be like, no, you're disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> like, it did feel like a thing they already, I don't think it was made for the movie itself. Is it's something what, that Twin yeah. Galaxy's already had. Yes, exactly. Yeah, right. I think it's still very funny because it's like I don't know. Say fuck if Donkey Kong kills you. <laughs> who cares? Yeah. Um, uh, one of the only the only other notes I had is that um, they do a really cool thing um, with chalk lines in yeah like a chalk line overlay when he, when he is, draws on the mm. board or the screen. Yeah, but they do that like uh, in a couple, like that whole kind of section. They he draws on the screen, and then they show him um, moving around. But then they also add it to like him doing a drum solo at one part. I don't know. It was a really cool effect that they they added to the movie. Mm. It seems like no one gives a shit. <laughs> nah, <laughs> apparently. I don't. Uh, I know what you're talking about, but I uh, not enough for me to have anything to say about it. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> anyway, well, fuck you then. <laughs> I do. Early on, it's very intense when that one gamer is being interviewed, and he's like, "Everybody, even your grandma, games." <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> he's so intense. He's like, "Yeah, I guess if you count checkers, for sure." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not wrong, <laughs> but he's so intense. There was one Walter quote that I wrote down from the beginning that kind of got me and it was like i wanted the pretty girls to come at me and say hey, hi i see that you're good at centipede and like no one's gonna say that, <laughs> <laughs> no one's gonna yeah. say that. it's such a weird it, that's why i think it's such a good documentary because it's such a weird subculture that it's not one we all know about or the ins and outs of but everyone in it is so intense about it <laughs> so it's so yeah. good and like, I think, like it's a good timepiece too because all this stuff happened before like the rise of like twitch and let's play really i thought stuff, for like... some fucking reason i thought you were gonna say 9-11 <laughs> <I was gonna laughs> all of this happened pre-9-11 before we all focused our efforts on something else but yeah uh, you're right you are right it's like it's um yeah, it's a pre-streaming, pre... Like, people make fucking millions of dollars now s literally playing games while people watch, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, I think there's a... I think the reason why Steve's um, record has gotten beaten so many times is that there is, like, um, like, a monetary gain from playing a game and trying to beat a record, like, over and over again on a stream every single night. Mm -hmm. like there's there's a it's not just a guy grinding for months on end in his um garage there's people actually yeah donating money and spending to to watch you play and <laughs> tim five you. tim five bucks for me to wipe my kids ass <laughs> 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 but no I, I i totally agree and it's there's also a very weird part i mean it's not worth getting into because none of us have the wherewithal to even talk about it but the fact that like cyberpunk 2077 right they're is it them that are are they charging twitch streamers to stream their games or did they threaten them to do that it was something like that where they were like i don't know enough it's... about the topic to talk about this. exactly yeah i don't either so i should just cut this out but that I think sucks. But I think it's a thing where like games are going to start doing that, where they're like, oh, because you're making money off of playing our games, we are going to charge you to do that, which is so but... fucked up. Yeah, yeah but so the game is like sixty bucks, so yeah, I should yeah, be able yeah, to do what it yeah. what I want. <laughs> anyway, we shouldn't waste time on this. I'll cut this because none of us are <laughs> informed on this at all. Did you guys hear about like? Oh, great! You can cut this too, but because this is this is totally un unrelated. Did you guys hear about this thing that Burger King was doing with Twitch? You hear about this? You know about this? <laughs> what? Yeah. What? Okay, so so apparently, if you're on Twitch, um, you can accept tips, and like yeah. some people can um tip you a burger. 
No, no. Oh. Can tip, and um, if you have it set up, get an audio playback. So you're playing the game, and it'll read out your your tip on um, on your stream so that you can hear it instead of looking at the comments, but also everybody else can hear it. Like, it's an audio but overlay. coming from, like, Harvey's or wherever the fuck they went? Like... No, no, so th- no, that's just something you can do. Like, if somebody's watching, if somebody's playing Donkey Kong, Michael, you could tip somebody five bucks and be like, hey, great job on that barrel roll. Keep it up, Steve. <laughs> yeah. And that would and that would overplay on Steve Weeby's stream. Sure. Okay. Anyways, the point of the story is is that Burger King was using this to advertise on people's streams and paying people five bucks and saying, "Hey, go get a Whopper." <laughs> so Burger, insane. so they had an intern. <laughs> so wait, so they had an intern in like popular Twitch streams tipping people and then saying, "Hey, go get a burger at Burger King." <laughs> yes, basically, and then like kind of call, like like edited an entire video and then put it out. And then everybody was just like, wait, you're not supposed to use my stream for your infomercial? So it was a, a clip show of the... Burger the, King literally tipping people. A Burger King saying, hey, go get a burger for me over top of footage of like popular Twitch streamers like Ninja and Hassan Piker or whatever. I don't know who those people are, but sure, yeah. I think those are popular <laughs> Twitch streamers. <laughs> That, without them reacting at all it's just like that's insane that's, insane. that's a thing so that. i think the, the most insane part is that they paid them five bucks to average like i i don't even, it might not even been five bucks it might like, have been could the you lowest amount of money that you could give yeah. like burger king a billion dollar industry tipping the lowest amount that they could do to, to advertise get audio to streams to hundreds of yep. thousands of people but could you argue Correct. here's the interesting thing and we could do a whole other episode just strictly about this but could if you were burger king could you argue paying um let's say ninja paying ninja five dollars to say hey buy a burger at burger king and using his image could does that count as like paying as compensation him? is that what you're thinking yeah like does that count as like I buying don't... that from him it doesn't but right? I, obviously no no I don't oh. know how, like, courts are fucked up. Courts said corporations <laughs> because, are like, people. That's using his so. like, well, that's using his likeness and image for, like, something completely different that he didn't sign up for. Like, I feel like if he had signed up for it and he signed a thing with You know what? Thing, I guess it, it probably comes down to the terms of use or whatever. The... Well, that's the thing is it came yeah. down to the, the terms of service of Twitch that that wasn't allowed but the damage was already done like they got what they <laughs> wanted right? the damage everyone was people just already, decimated hundreds of thousands of people bought whoppers the damage was done, <laughs> the damage was done. too many people had the whoppers amazing <laughs> think of all the whoppers that were bought that day like like you can't get it's those like back those people picture, aren't getting their money back in my head it's slow motion it's like same private ryan music <laughs> people like buying whoppers and the courts being like no 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 uh <laughs> so tim john wick scale john wick this gets I think John Wick. I've seen. I saw it in the newspaper. <laughs> I hate this skill so much. <laughs> it's Wick a face-off on. scale. We're gonna start twenty twenty one face-off scale. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think this gets a um, a John Wick. They. <laughs> Fuck, it's really funny to, to be like, uh, what do you think it has on a John Wick scale? And you're like, no, we'll call it the face-off scale. It gets a John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Um, they, I think I, we see King of Kong in like the um, newspaper. Yeah, I think so. But that's it. So yeah, yeah this gets a, a or one. I think on it's a face-off news- scale. Yeah, it's like a news segment or something says the King of Kong or something. Yeah, yeah, it's not atrocious. No. And I do mm. love the subtitle. I love the this subtitle. Full of yeah. quarters. <laughs> this full of quarters is very funny. And they never say that. So, uh, so cameo. Any other notes? Oh, well, I need to uh, check the notes. I'm done. I'm done. I'm good. Uh, oh, the one last one I have is shout out to Doris Shelf, the Cubert person. Oh. She, uh, at the end, they did a in memory of. They so. did. 
Yeah, she seemed cute. I felt bad. It's very funny that he, like, ropes her. Billy Mitchell ropes her into, like, oh, yeah, bring this tape. It's very important. Lose your lug luggage, but don't lose this. And then he uses the same joke again, <laughs> like, a second time. It's like, okay, Billy Mitchell. But, and then when he interviews her, he's she's like, oh, he's very, like, devious. <laughs> like, <laughs> she legit uses devious as a descriptor for yeah. him. Um. She is rec she is recognized by Guinness Book of World Records as the world's oldest oldest video game champion. Hell so, yeah. She that's off to Doris. Love you, Doris. Uh all right. Cameo. But now I know you're just a cameo. <laughs> um uh so it was mine correct yes yep so i chose um a because uh, it's related to one of our previous films the nice guys <gasps> I... russell crowe's on cameo no <laughs> i wish <laughs> i chose richard thomas who played john boy in the waltons <laughs> <laughs> and was also in the show the americans <laughs> Uh, so not hold on not, <laughs> let's get our bearings right here john boy not the actor who played john boy in the nice guys not matt bomber no <clears throat> the real john boy the real john boy richard thomas who's an actor <laughs> who is an richard actor thomas. who played john boy in the waltons also was in the americans his name is richard thomas how much do you think he goes for how much does he go for? How much would I pay? How much? Would and well, pay? it's how much we. You've got to guess how much he thinks he's he, worth. Yeah, right. we'll talk about uh, what you think he's. I mean, we all know he's worth nothing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's a good actor, but I, I don't want a cameo. For, we all can uh, agree on. I'll that. yield. I'm gonna yield the floor to Incha. To all start right, off. Incha, how much do you think he's asking for? Fuck. Uh, <laughs> it's it's it it's shockingly. Hard to I mean, figure that out, right? Because you would think I mean, in your head, you're like, like, 10 bucks? <laughs> but you're like, there's no way. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, like, I don't want to lowball him because right? that's mean. It is mean because um, he's a good actor. But I don't want to highball him because I don't think he's worth a hundred bucks. No, it's but condescending I... to say that. I agree. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I'm going to 80? <gasps> oh, see, oh. 80, see, see I, I agree with you. I don't think he's worth anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Richard Inch, I'm Thomas, glad you said it first. Richard but I'll Thomas, agree with you. you are worth he's not worth. He's not worth anything. He is, he is I, worth something, too. Um, Could he but be I think he thinks he's worth. I think he thinks he's worth fifty dollars. <laughs> well, I think, he, I think he thinks. I think he thinks. I know I think he's worth nothing. But I think he thinks. He's well, worth. here's the thing. We talked about it on the, this last one. If he's worth ten bucks, I might get it for Rachel's mom for for Christmas. Like that's or no for Valentine's Day. Valentine. That's with uh, Rachel, your husband, my son-in-law, bought me a Valentine's Day gift that was uh, John Boy from the Waltons from the saying, Waltons. take it east to me. <laughs> so I think you should. Uh... Anyway, uh, Incha, you were bang on $80 is what he thinks he's worth. Oh, no. Or, <laughs> or. For interest free payments of twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Cameo has interest free payments now? Apparently it's right above the request eighty dollars button. <laughs> I mean his I watched a couple of his videos and they're good, like they're fine. He's great. Like I I feel bad because I love it. I think he's very good. Um he's great in the Americans. He plays uh, Noah Emmerich's boss in it, and he's very good. But I don't. I wouldn't pay. Who who's gonna pay eighty dollars for him? To, I feel bad because it's like no, no like no, I you're think wrong. His time, he's just wrong. The worst part, I think, is his time was like forty years ago. 
nobody yes. wants him now. Yeah. Like, I, like that's a such an <laughs> ageist thing to say. Like, I, I you're feel right. bad for saying it. I feel nobody wants him now. <laughs> there's no way you're a hundred percent correct, and there's no way for us to say it nicer. But it, you're not now. <laughs> you need to charge <laughs> like fifty yeah. bucks tops, right? Yeah, like tops. nobody wants or, a seventy-year-old John boy. Ninja, what? Or less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like 40 30 but maybe like a good maybe like a good like 25 i don't know i feel i honestly feel bad because i feel like we're being meaner to him than he deserves because he seems great <laughs> and his videos are good and he's good and i like him he's just not relevant now he's not... like, he's like Wait, so here's the thing is that like there's a nostalgia there's a nostalgia line like if um uh uh what's um AC Slater from Saved by the Bell. What's his name? Mario, Mario Lopez. Mario Lopez? Yeah, Mario Lopez. If he was on Cameo, people are going to be like, oh, he's on some things now as a host of reality shows. I think is there's he... also a Saved by the Bell reboot he's on. I'm sure. Isn't he like Colonel Sanders in the new life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. He yep. <laughs> yeah, he is. And he's got the 90s nostalgia. Like, that's like people will pay for night. Maybe I should have went with Screech or somebody less. <laughs> no, you're right. You're on the. I get what you're saying. So don't second guess yourself. Yeah, yeah. But, like, the there is no Walton's nostalgia. There's no Screech. Walton's nostalgia. I love any incident where Tim is, like, totally on the right track for anything. And then, like, three quarters of the way through, him being like, ah, maybe I should have gone with Screech. <laughs> <laughs> like his driving test or his marriage. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I should have married Screech. Uh, I do. I. I. As mean as you are to Richard Thomas, who is great, uh, you are right. I think there's just no market. I don't think there's a market for him, which is what I think you're saying, right? Yeah. Like I. Like I said, there's like the the people who are internet savvy enough to buy cameos. Are buying things from the 90s and the early 2000s not things from like the 70s and i 80s. will Unless... say as devil's advocate i will say there would be a lot of people like our age who or slightly older who maybe would buy it for their it for parents. their mom yeah for like a gift for their parents being like hey here's john boy saying good night to you or whatever as a gift you know i think the other thing too is that john boy is like a character like he's a boy Mm. Not John Man. <laughs> Not John Man. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> there's Devil Advocate and then there's Devil's like dirtbag. <laughs> You're being the Devil's dirtbag right now. <laughs> I I don't. People know people know him. He he's got the fucking thing on his face. The mole. <laughs> he's got the mole on his face. People know him. <laughs> I gotta agree with Tim. I'm sorry. You gotta. You think people, if you're like, oh, I, I got you a thing from John Boy, and then you said, then the person would be like, well, he's not a boy. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's been 50 years, <laughs> Grandma, and you wouldn't kill them immediately. You wouldn't put a pillow over I think... the face immediately. No, if I showed them, if I showed this to uh, my mother-in-law, she'd be like, who's that? It's like that's John Boy. He's like. It doesn't really look like John Boy anymore. But you don't. No, here's so here's here's what's so upsetting, Tim. You have used cameo. <laughs> you have used cameo. You know it isn't just a still picture. They talk. <laughs> they can say, "I am Richard Thomas. I'm John Boy from the Walls. I would like to say, uh, yeah, but Happy like, birthday, Merry Christmas, etc." But what if somebody doesn't believe that? Believe Yeah, if they what? have to say it, <laughs> then it's, it ruins about? the whole Wait, hold ambiance. on. No, shut the fuck up, Tim. Incha, <laughs> what if somebody doesn't believe what? <laughs> what if somebody doesn't believe like that he's actually John Boy from the wall? He got wolves. <laughs> How is that his problem? Isn't that an issue with... That is kind of because he's on, it is, on how cameo is, no, charging $80. I think that is his problem. It isn't in any way. Though. It's <laughs> the person who bought it and the person who they bought it for is problem. It's not his problem in any way at all. What do you mean? It's a marketing so, problem. So here's the thing. It's a marketing so problem. Inch, so here, the, the, the scenario that you laid out, uh, Tim bought me a Dustin Diamond 
saying, oh, hello, I'm Screech from Saved by the Bell, and I would like to wish you a happy birthday. He sends me, shows me the video, and I say, <laughs> I say, that's not Dustin Diamond. <laughs> and then in some, for some fucking reason, <laughs> Inch thinks that's Dustin Diamond's fault? <laughs> or his, like, problem <laughs> in any way at all? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> now, that, now, that, now, that, now that you say that, I imagine Inch's person like going to buy Richard Thomas and be like, Ooh, what if what if my mother in law doesn't know who this is? What if she doesn't believe <laughs> she doesn't... and decides to find us a diamond instead? <laughs> what if she doesn't believe in John? <laughs> But it's like you wouldn't buy it for someone. It's such a dumb question. It's such a bad question. It's like asking asking fucking Tom Hanks to pretend to be Forrest Gump and then him doing it and you being like, how do I know that's Forrest Gump? Like, what are you talking about? I would have bought it for you if it wasn't Forrest Gump. I don't know. We gotta end this. Somebody, somebody yell cameo. <laughs> We're done. He's not worth. Sorry, Richard Thomas, you're not worth eighty. No, he's you're not really worth, not he's though. Not, he's not worth eighty. <laughs> yell it. Cameo. But now I know you're just a cameo. Now, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> film run, walk or crawl. Tim. Oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, so. I picked it, so I'm going to film run this. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was great. I, I like this really documentary. It's one of my favorite documentaries. It's so obscure, and there's such a ca odd cast of characters, and it's a good uh, insight into... Um, I think we we already said it's a it's a good underdog story, and uh, it's got a good um, bad guy versus good guy dynamic that they're able to capture in in a documentary. If if somebody were to tell me in 2020 that this was a mockumentary, I would 100% believe them because it is that over the top and it's the perfect storytelling. So, uh, Michael, uh, I agree. I'll I'll film run it. I think it's uh, very good, very fun. Um, everything Tim said, like just watching it, a lot of scenes feel fake, but they're not, which is, I guess, what you want <laughs> from a movie. <laughs> uh, but it's a film run for sure. Um, Incha. Uh, it's a film run for me because it's yeah. it's absolutely fascinating and it's flabbergasting, but it's also kind of. It's really wild how the thought and the energy that like these people have in video games and introducing into their life like it's it like when they did math I was like what but it's it's really wild cool. like the the I mean and that's the best a documentary can do like diving into a subculture like it's wild mm -hmm. how passionate they are about it you know yeah um, Incha, so you almost watched this before Film Runners and before I could pick it. Are you glad that you waited so that we can talk about this? <laughs> almost. With, she with almost watched it. Like she had a fucking gun to her head. It was like, I don't know to pull the trigger. I might watch the No, 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 no. She, I think she knew that I, it was on my radar of a film to pick. Yeah. And you decided and maybe... not to watch it yeah. out of a kindness of me because you're my best friend. Kind yeah, there you go. It's on air now. You can't take it back. Um, but yeah, I can I'm cut kinda, that I'm, out. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I edit. Um, I am happy that I watched it. It's good. And yeah, I watched it you, with you guys. You said it was a film run, right? Mhm. Mm yeah. 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 Even though it made me mad, it is upsetting. <laughs> it's very. It's a very <laughs> upsetting thing. <clears throat> um so um isn't it recommendations? recommendations yeah recommendation um 
I don't have a ton of recommendations, um, but if you like other um, sports, I mean, esports documentaries that are kind of like sports, watch any of the 30 for 30 documentaries. They're all really good, and they do a good job similar to what this does of uh, where you um, pit. They, they, they pick a, a protagonist and a bad guy, and they um, show it to you. Like, <laughs> You know, um, you're right. You, uh, you OJ, were... <laughs> OJ Simpson and uh, and a uh, 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 Bronco. Yeah, or, the good guys you know. and bad guys in that order. <laughs> OJ, <laughs> OJ Simpson and the Bronco. Uh, you were right. The the less you started talking, <laughs> you were. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. even think of Thirty for Thirty. Is a very good recommendation for sure. Um, Michael, recommendations. Uh, I will pick. Um, I guess. Dark On, which is a documentary about uh, live action role playing, and that's it. I'm done. Yeah, that's it. No other recs. Incha. It's hard to find, and my professor has showed it to us because he directed it, but there's this documentary called 8 Bit, and if you can find it, Please, dear God, watch it. It's so good. It's literally about um, video games and people who make 8-bit music from the video game systems, like Game Boys and stuff like that. Oh, that's um, yeah, it's really cool. But yeah, if you can find it, watch it. <laughs> Very cool. That's really cool. I like... Um, they do that a couple of times that would cost in this film, too, have some 8-bit music. <laughs> they do. They also have... Um, there's a lot Winter of... Cohen. They're kind of... Not a lot, but like three or four really good songs. So I don't know what I'm going to use for the opening and the ending. Um, I forgot to say, too, uh, if you want to watch another um, thing directed by Seth Gordon, who is the director of this, you can watch uh, a couple episodes of The Office that he did. Yeah. He, he did that Double Date, sense. the <laughs> one where <laughs> he did Double Date, where uh, Pam and Jim go on a date with Bob Vance and Phyllis. <laughs> that makes sense. It's very uh, officey in parts. Well, that's what I said. And Billy Earth Mitchell, is... allegedly, one of the things I remember reading about it years ago was that the filmmakers, probably Seth Gordon, was like, I had to cut out a lot of Billy Mitchell stuff to make him funny because if I kept it in, he would be disgusting <laughs> like, or something like that, <laughs> where he's just like a piece of shit. Like, he's garbage. That is very Yikes. interesting. Yeah. I did not hear about that, but that makes me... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm lying. Maybe I'm, mm. I'm not... I'm, 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 now I'm questioning whether that's true. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, whatever. whatever. No, for sure. I do remember them saying, like, we had to cut some Billy Mitchell s- stuff out or <laughs> it wouldn't be entertaining because it would be weird and bad. I want to see this. <laughs> yeah let's see that x-rated cut <laughs> just billy um, mitchell billy mitchell fucking his hot sauce <laughs> Alrighty. um next week is a classic michael pick you know it baby all right what do you oh. got for us Mike? um bad day at black rock i've never seen it yeah, I, I assumed I didn't have to ask. But I don't think, Incha, have you seen it before? I don't even know what that is. Great. You can both watch it. You can both shove it in your pie holes and <laughs> talk to me about it next time. <laughs> and we will talk about it next week, which is for sure next week and not several weeks from now. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Keeping the fourth wall. <laughs> You're ruining the ambiance. No, it's fine. Bad day at Black Rock is what I've chosen. Bad day at Black Rock. Yes. Presented in Technicolor. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a <laughs> cool, cool way to end the episode. <laughs> Think of something funny to say, uh, Incha. Mm-mm. Yeah, perfect. It's great. <laughs> Everybody knows that the dice are loaded Everybody rolls with their fingers crossed Everybody knows the war is over Everybody knows the good guys 
last Everybody knows the fight was fixed The poor stay poor, the rich get rich That's how it goes Everybody knows Everybody knows that the boat is leaking Everybody knows the captain lied Everybody got this broken feeling Like their father or their dog just died Everybody talking to their pockets Everybody wants a box of chocolates And a long stem rolls Everybody knows Okay, here we are. We got cameras on the screen, cameras on the crowd. No one's gonna miss this moment. 998-2. Here we go. We have every eye in the crowd focused right on your screen. Everybody's looking, every camera's on here. We're not gonna miss this for anything. I don't think there's any distraction that can pull everyone away right now. Oh, and look at that. And with the bonus, we have the first million point game of Donkey Kong. And the score, and the score reads zero, six zeros all the way across. Not even Helen of Troy had that much, much attention.